Well, today I want to begin a new preaching and teaching series through the book of Galatians that I've entitled The Gospel According to Grace. The Gospel According to Grace. And for Sundays and Wednesdays, we're going to be reading and studying through the book of Galatians. And I want to encourage you to turn there with me now to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 6 through 16. In your private time, I want to encourage you to read this short letter to the Galatians. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 16. When you have it, if you are able to stand for the reading of the word of God, would you please stand? Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 16. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through verse 16. I'm reading from the New International Version, and it reads, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than the one, other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not a, of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, my immediate response was not to consult any human being. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For the moments we have to share, I want to entitle this first message in this series, One Gospel. One Gospel. There is a certain type of scam found mostly in retail, but it could be practiced in other settings as well, called bait and switch. This is when a company advertises a product that appeals to us. Maybe that product is a high definition television or a pair of shoes to get us to visit their store. And once we're there, the sales associate tries to pressure us to buy a different item than the one that was advertised. Perhaps an item of lesser quality or some item that costs more than the one that was advertised. We come in for one thing and we leave with something else. This particular passage in the book of Galatians, this passage is a kind of bait and switch scenario. The Apostle Paul, who is the author of this letter, he was the one who evangelized the churches in Galatia. You can read about those churches in his first missionary trip in the book of Acts chapter 13 and chapter 14. The Apostle Paul was the one that helped to institute the churches here in Galatia. And shortly after Paul made this first trip to the a region of Galatia, there were some other preachers that came behind the Apostle Paul and they switched the gospel up on the people of God. They went from talking about salvation by grace to salvation by keeping the law. And they started to switch the gospel up on God's people. It was no longer a salvation that is obtained by grace, but it was a salvation that was obtained by keeping the law. 
these Christians were not promised one version of the gospel and given a different version. Instead, they were promised and given the real version of the gospel. But later, some other people came along and switched the gospel up on them. Started telling them, you have to keep the rules. You have to keep the regulations or else you will not make it into heaven. And my brothers and sisters, there are many people who have come into the church, even in the 21st century, under one version of the gospel, but now they're trying to earn their salvation under a different version of the gospel. That we've come into the church on the basis of grace and God's unmerited favor. But since we've come into the church, we have been convinced by some people that we have to keep certain rules and regulations if we're going to make it to heaven. You got to wear your dress a certain way. You, you got to read your Bible a certain number of times. You got to do certain things in order to make it to heaven. And my brothers and sisters, that is a different gospel because salvation is by grace. As verse 6 puts it in our passage, it is by the grace of Christ. Grace is a word that means favor. It's a word that means undeserved or unmerited favor. It means loving kindness. And, that's, and when you talk about the grace of Christ, what you are talking about is God's act of loving kindness expressed through Christ when Christ left heaven, came to earth, and gave himself on the cross of Calvary. That was the act of grace or the grace of Christ. It was through that event that God invited you and I into this relationship with him. In fact, Romans chapter 2 and verse 4 teaches us that it is God's kindness that leads us to repentance. It is not the rules. It is not the regulations. It is not stiff penalties that save us or the fear of stiff penalties, but it is the grace of God. However, some people who have been saved by the grace of God are now trying to earn their way to heaven by being good enough and, and doing everything the right way and, and, and not making any mistakes. But the, 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 the statement that the Apostle Paul makes in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, is still one of the most poignant statements on the doctrine of grace that we have in all the Bible. The Apostle Paul says, for it is by grace that you have been saved and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest anyone should boast. Y'all, you are not saved. You don't have eternal citizenship in heaven. You are not forgiven of all of your sins because of how good you are, but you are saved because of how good God is. Do I have a witness in here? Don't let nobody convince you to trade grace for a cheaper version. The question I want us to answer today is how do we stay faithful to the real gospel? How do we stay faithful to the, to the right gospel? Well, I'm going to give you three things that I think this text is tailored to teach us today, and I promise I'll take my seat. Number one, I think what Paul is trying to express here is that if you and I are going to stay faithful to the gospel of grace, there must be an adherence to the one who calls us. You see, we have to stay loyal to God. We have to stay committed to the foundational truths that brought us into a relationship in the first place. This is the exact opposite of what the Galatians did. Because when you read verse 6, listen to what the Apostle Paul says. Paul says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ. And are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Now I think I need to pause here and tell you what the word gospel means. The word gospel means good news. That's what it means. And Paul says that the Galatians, shortly after he preached to them, they started turning from the good news to something that really isn't good news in the first place. And they did this quickly. Like, like right after he left them, right after he instituted the church, right after he preached to them, Right after he ministered to them, 
They were quick to turn from the good news to something else. And I started wondering to myself, what would make a person turn from the Lord, turn from God so quickly? And you know what? I think the answer is in the question. The fact that they turn quickly means that perhaps they didn't take enough time to get to know the one that they were turning from. Y'all, we are so quick to leave God for another type of relationship, for religions, for practices and groups before we have really gotten to know the God we have come into relationship with. Because somehow we think that another group is better than what we have with God. Somehow we think that what somebody else is offering is better than what we have with God. Let me tell you what that's like. That's just like checking into a five-star hotel. But before you go up to your room, you immediately check out of the five-star hotel to go stay at an Airbnb on the beach. And then when you get to the Airbnb, you find out there's no plumbing and there's no air conditioning. You left the five-star hotel to go to something of lesser quality. Can I tell you, we serve a five-star God. We serve a God that is amazing. We serve a God that is awesome. How can you leave this God to check out and go somewhere else that's serving up something far lesser than the God you have in your life right now? You know, the longer you walk with God, the better you begin to understand God. And my brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that if you just got here, if you just became a Christian, if you just joined this church, stay long enough to get to know the one who called you. Because the longer you walk with God, the more you begin to understand the grace of God, the more you begin to understand that God's grace didn't just save you and bring you in the church, but God's grace is what walks with you every single day of your life. That every day you are experiencing God's grace, sometimes in small ways, like when somebody encourages you at the right time and the right moment, and sometimes in big ways, when somebody pays a bill that you didn't have money to pay for for yourself. God's grace is walking with us every day of our lives. Sometimes the grace of God will let your money last longer than you thought it could last. Sometimes the grace of God will give you more energy than you thought you could have sometimes the grace of God will reverse the doctor's decision when the doctor said it wasn't going to be good and you needed this and you needed that sometimes the grace of God will make the doctor look at the film a second time and say I don't see what I saw the last time is there anybody in here that know that every day you wake up you are waking up with the grace of God Let's just be honest in here. The grace of God kept you at the stoplight. Because that other car ran the stoplight. And it was the grace of God that delayed you so you wouldn't be in the intersection at that moment and saved your life. Can we be honest in here? It was the grace of God that sent the bullet in a different direction because had it went where it was targeted, you would have gotten hit. Is there anybody in here that knows that it was the grace of God? Y'all, can I be honest with you? It's the grace of God that while I'm preaching this message this morning, I haven't done everything right. I haven't been the best person in my life. Even as a pastor, I've sinned and made some mistakes. But can I tell you why I'm preaching today? It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God in my life that has me preaching the word. And if you were not so holy and self-righteous, then you would testify that the only reason why God hadn't taken you out of here yet, it is because of the grace of God. Anybody in here know that if it had not been for the grace of God, I would not be here right now. And, and, and here we see, we see that it is the grace of God. I remember when I graduated high school, 
um, I didn't go off to college right away. I stayed home and went to a two-year college, a junior college. I didn't have the best high school career. Graduated high school with a 2.79 and, you know, couldn't qualify for scholarships. I played around too much when I was in high school. But let me tell you, junior colleges will help you get it back together. And so I graduated high school, went to a junior college for two years in my home city and uh, before I went off to school. And I remember when I was on campus at the junior college, I had some friends that would only show up long enough to get the financial aid check. So they would attend school for half the semester. And when they got the financial aid check, they were gone. You didn't see them anymore for the rest of the semester. And then they would come back the next semester and do the same thing re-enroll, get the financial aid check, you wouldn't see them no more. And many of them never went on to get their degree, never went on to do anything in their life, never went on to get a good job and a good stable job. Why? Because they were trading long-term success for a short-term reward. They didn't realize that if you just come to class and you do the homework and you do the assignments, and you read the assignments, and you earn the degree, then when you get the degree, you can get a job that'll pay you more money than this short-term financial aid check that you keep showing up for half the semester to try to get. They were trading long-term success for a short-term reward because they didn't understand that the longer you stay and the more assignments you complete and the more times you show up at class, you will get a degree that will bless you bigger than that short-term check. Here is what I'm trying to help you to understand. That the longer you stay in class, the more you keep doing the assignments, the more you keep reading the Word of God, the more you keep overcoming, y'all, God will graduate you to a whole nother level and he'll give you a reward that's greater than some of the short-term stuff we keep running after. Do I have a witness in here? Let me give you the second thing the Apostle Paul says here in Galatians. Because Paul not only says that the way for you and I to stay faithful is to adhere to the one who calls us, but he tells us that we must also abandon those who corrupt us. Listen to what Paul says. In in the latter part of verse 7, Paul says, evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Listen to what he says. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. Now, Paul repeats that phrase again in verse 9 when he says, uh, as we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. In the New International Version, that phrase, under God's curse, is one word in the Greek. It is the Greek word anathema. And it literally means let a person be separated from you Watch this. Let them be separated from you in order that God may bring judgment into their life. It is just like what we say when a person tells a lie and we say, well, you better get away from them because lightning is about to strike them. Right? That's exactly what Paul is saying. That when you come across a person who's not preaching the real gospel, you better get away from them because God's judgment is about to come on their life. Now, the thing that was interesting is that Paul says that if we himself or an angel should preach another gospel or a gospel other than the one that was preached, let that one come under a curse. Do you know what that means? Paul is saying that what I preached to you at first was the right message. If I deviate from that, then even I should come under a curse. Paul says, let, let if I or an angel. Now, why would Paul say that? Because when you think about an angel, we often think good things. Angels are good. And we fail to realize that demons are angels too. And the demons used to be good angels. 
They used to be in heaven. They used to worship God. But this good angel became a bad angel. What Paul is saying is that even folk who start off good can end up going bad. And that's why you cannot be committed to a person. You got to be committed to the word. Y'all ain't helping me with none of this. We glorify preachers too much in our day and time. We put preachers up on pedestals and then when the preachers start going wrong, we start going wrong. But Paul is saying that no minister, no preacher is above the word of God. So if the preacher ain't right, that should not affect you because the moment the preacher starts going left, then I'm going to keep on going right. Do I have a witness in here? Stop getting wrapped up in personalities and start bringing your Bible to church, reading along with the preacher so you can make sure that whatever is being preached to you is coming from the word of God. Everybody should not have permission to speak into your life. I can't get no help in here today. Everybody is not qualified to preach to you. You better check out what folk are preaching before you start accepting what they are saying to you. I told this illustration, and I said I wasn't going to tell it today, but I told this illustration this past week uh, in Bible study. When my friend, when I was in seminary in Richmond, Virginia, uh, my friends and I, we were eat out local restaurants around the seminary, and, and we noticed that there was a new soul food restaurant that just opened up in uh, the area around the campus. So we decided we were gonna go check out that restaurant, Soul Food. And it wasn't just a Soul Food restaurant, it was a Soul Food buffet. And so we were gonna check this thing out. And we stopped in and we went in and the buffet looked good. Hardly anybody in the restaurant, but the buffet looked good. Collard greens on the buffet, mac and cheese on the buffet, potato salad on the buffet. Fried chicken on the buffet, lima beans on the buffet. I mean, it had some good stuff on this buffet. And the lady who sat us, black lady, looked like she was from the South and could really throw down. She sat us at our t table and, and, and she gave us our plates and we went up to the buffet and it was about three bites into the food. My friends and I slowed down our chewing, looked at each other, and said, something ain't right with this food. Something ain't quite right with this. We didn't even finish the first plate. We didn't go back for a second plate. And then we got up and we went to check out. And the same lady who looked like she can throw down was the same lady uh, taking our bill and, and cashing us out. And the register was right in front of the kitchen. And there was two double doors that, that, that covered the kitchen. And as I was paying the, for the food, the two double doors swung open. And I saw everybody in the back that was cooking. And it made sense to me when I saw who was in the kitchen, why this food doesn't taste right. And me and my friends looked at each other and said, I wish I would have saw who was cooking before I sat down to eat this meal. And all I'm trying to tell you is you better watch who's cooking your meal before you sit down to absorb whatever it is they're trying to give you. Do I have a witness in here? I'm almost done. I'll let you go. Watch this. Here's the third thing. The Apostle Paul says, the Apostle Paul says here that not only must you abandon those who try to corrupt you, but you must also authenticate the ones who are challenging you. If I'm going to listen to you, tell me about how to relate to God, then I want to see how your message has impacted your own life. We should be wary of people who try to sell us a product that they're not willing to try themselves. I read a story this past week 
an article about a televangelist who's trying to sell a miracle cure to the coronavirus. <laughs> trying to get y'all to call in, put your credit card on it, and buy a miracle cure for the coronavirus. And the AG, the Attorney General of New York, sent the televangelist a cease and desist order because there are no cures for the coronavirus and no vaccines have been developed yet and trying to get this man to stop misleading folk through a scam to try to get money out of people. And y'all, I, whenever I read articles online, I immediately, after I read the article, I go to the comment section because the comments are more... Uh, I like the comments more than the article itself. There was over 200 comments to this article and most of them said to the televangelist, why don't you let yourself get infected with the coronavirus and try your own solution and if it works, then I'll buy it. And y'all, as harsh as that may have sounded, there is a truth in that, that if you won't try your own stuff, then why are you trying to give it to me? When my wife and I try a new restaurant, we ask the waiter and the waitress, if we've never been there before, what do they recommend? And, the, and we are more convinced by the waiters and the waitresses who go through the menu and say, well, I've had this and I've had that and I can tell you that this is really good. You know why? Because we are convinced by personal testimony. If you've tried it, if you've had an experience, if you can, can testify to this, then I'm more likely to believe. And y'all, this is what the Apostle Paul says to us in verses 13 through verse 16. Paul says, watch this, I'm going to back up to verse 11. Let me read this in context. Paul says, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach is not of human origin. I I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my father. Watch this. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, my immediate response was not to consult any human being. Paul is saying that I'm not just preaching a message to you that has not had an impact on my own life. Y'all, because you know, he says to the Galatians, how I used to live before I became a Christian. How I used to live before I became a minister. You know how I persecuted the church. How I dogged the Christian church. How I dogged other Christians. But y'all, you also know, and you can see my life now, since Christ has come into my life you see the grace of God all over my life and how God's grace has changed my life Paul says that y'all you can trust my message because you can look in my life and see how God's grace has affected me watch this Paul says I didn't even consult another human being in other words I didn't get my gospel from going to school <laughs> I didn't get my gospel from some degree. I didn't get my gospel by asking somebody about this. I got my gospel when I looked at how God worked in my life. When I saw how God changed my life. When God turned things around for me. When God opened. I got my gospel from a direct experience with the Lord. And my brothers and sisters, some of the best evidence for the gospel is a personal testimony of how the gospel changed you. What were you like before you became a Christian? How did you think and act and feel before receiving God's grace in your life? What has your life been like now that you have come to understand the message? You don't need, my brothers and sisters, to know anything about epistemological systems and apologetics. All you need to know is what God has done in your life. All you need to do is testify and tell your story. The Bible says to us, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story open your mouth and tell 
folk, what God has done to you. That is some of the most convincing evidence that any of us could ever have is how God impacted your life. I'm done, and I'll leave you. But when you receive the gospel, and I'm talking about the real gospel, you don't need any other version. When you receive the real gospel, no other version will ever compare to it. When you know the real gospel, then you have good news. I wish I had a help in here that when you have experienced God's grace, you can tell anyone coming with another gospel to get lost. When people try and offer you a different savior, you can boldly tell them, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. No other gospel forgives me like this one. No other gospel gives me hope like this one. No other gospel gives me peace like this one. No other gospel restores my soul like this one. I don't want your version of it. I don't want the Methodist version of it. I don't want the Baptist version of it. I don't want the Pentecostal version of it. I don't want the prosperity gospel. I don't want the universalist gospel. I don't want the lose your salvation gospel. But I want the gospel, the one that Jesus gave. I want the one that explains how Jesus came down from heaven to earth. I want the one where the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory I want the one where the glory has only begotten father I want the one where Jesus went on the hill called Calvary I want the gospel where Jesus had nails in his hands and nails in his feet I want the gospel where they hung him high and they stretched him wide I want the gospel where he hung his head and the locks of his shoulder and and for me he died I want the gospel where he got up three days later with all power in his hands I don't want your version of it but I want the one he gave I want the gospel where Jesus said come unto me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest because when I received that gospel I came to Jesus just as I was, uh, weary, wounded, and sad, uh, and I found in him uh, a resting place, uh, and he has made me glad. Uh, I don't want your gospel uh, that tells me uh, how to get a bigger house. Uh, I don't want your gospel uh, that tells me uh, how to drive a new car. Uh, I don't want your gospel uh, that tells me uh, how to get more money. Uh, I don't want your gospel. Uh, that tells me uh, how to get a man uh, or how to get a woman uh, but I want that gospel uh, that forgives my sins uh, I want that gospel uh, that saves my soul uh, I want that gospel uh, that gives me peace uh, is there anybody in here uh, that don't want another gospel uh, just give me Jesus uh, you can keep all the other stuff uh, you can keep all the houses uh, you can keep the silver you can keep the gold but just give me Jesus because when I have Jesus I have peace when I have Jesus I have joy when I have Jesus I have salvation y'all excuse me I didn't dress around and got happy y'all I gotta say it for myself that I serve a God a God who's good he makes ways for me every single day because every day I wake up I wake up on grace every time I lay down I lay down on grace it was grace that kept me it was grace that brought me it was grace that protected me it was grace that delivered me is there anybody here that can praise God for grace is there anybody here that know the grace of God is there anybody here that know that it was God's grace uh, that woke you up this morning. Uh, 
God's grace uh, that washed over you last night, uh, then if you're not ashamed, uh, can you give God praise? Uh, can you praise him for his grace? Uh, somebody shout yes. Uh, thank you, God. Thank you for your grace. Uh, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Uh, if it had not been uh, for the grace of God, uh, I would be dead. Uh, I would be sleeping uh, in my grave. Uh, but the grace of God, but for the grace of God, uh, but for the grace of God. Uh, somebody here today, uh, you got a but grace testimony. Uh, you got a but grace praise. Uh, I should have been outdoors. Uh, I should be unemployed. Uh, I should be sick. Uh, I should be dead. Uh, I should be divorced. Uh, I should be in jail. Uh, but is there anybody uh, that can shout but for grace? Uh, that's the reason I'm here. Uh, but for grace. Uh, that's the reason I'm alive. Uh, but for grace. Uh, that's the reason I made it. Uh, but for grace. Uh, that's why I'm still here. Uh, Y'all excuse me. Uh, I'm trying to quit. Uh, but I got to testify. Uh, it was God's grace uh, that kept me. Uh, it was God's grace uh, that washed out for me. Uh, I should have been dead. Uh, when my mother died in 2010, uh, I should be on psychotic medication. When I went through all the hell that I've been through. Uh, but the reason I'm here... Uh, the reason I'm in my right mind, the reason why I look as good as I look right now, it was the grace of God. I cannot take credit for what God has done. Y'all, if you only knew all the sleepless nights, all the tears I cried, all the times I thought it was over, but the grace of God kept me alive. I'm trying to quit, uh, but I got a testimony. Uh, it was God's grace. Uh, if you ask me, uh, how did you make it? Uh, how did you get here? Uh, how did you overcome? Uh, how did you get saved? Uh, how did you get your joy? Uh, how did you get your peace? Uh, how is it you're still making it? Uh, if you ask me, uh, how I made it. Uh, the only thing I can tell you, uh, it was the grace of God. Uh, it was his grace. Uh, it was his grace. It was his grace. Uh, not my education. Uh, not my job. Uh, not even my church. Uh, not my pastor. Uh, not my deacons. Uh, not the choir. Uh, but if you want to know, uh, how I made it here, it was the grace of God. It was nothing but the grace of God. So you can keep that other gospel. You can keep that other gospel. Because I only want the gospel that got me in the kingdom. Somebody shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God make a way? I'm trying to quit. I'm trying to leave you alone. But y'all, it's gotten good to me because I know the God I serve. The God I serve, he's the kind of God that just when you think you're not going to make it, we serve the kind of God who will reach way down with his grace and he'll lift you up turn you around put your feet on solid ground do i have a witness here somebody shout yeah shout yeah shout yeah shout nothing but the grace nothing but the grace nothing but the grace you can keep the other gospel. You can keep going to that other church. You can keep messing around with them other religions. But it's nothing but the grace. Nothing but his 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 grace. The reason I'm alive. 
nothing but his grace. The reason I made it, nothing but his grace. Nothing but his grace. Just give me Jesus. I want nothing but his grace. Father, we love you.